So I'm a big X Factor fan. Even though I know all the tricks they play on you, I really buy into it. I think it's great entertainment, but I want to know what it's like going through that machine, being told, you're amazing, you're gonna be huge, you're gonna be a massive star, four yeses from the judges, and then for it just all to end suddenly. Jade Richards is 25, and from Buckhaven in Fife in Scotland, She's been on The X Factor twice, once in 2011 and again in 2013. Both times she got to judges' houses, just before the live finals. She's back at home now, living with her mum. Oh, you're Jamie Buckhead. I am, I. <laughs> you should have got there. Thank hey, you. Singer. Thank you very much. This is um, leaving High Street. Um, most of the shops have actually shut down. Just because there wasn't enough business there. And where do you work? Hiya. Uh, just in Superdrug here. And what do people say when they come up and see you? Just, um, are, you are you that girl off the telly? Do you like hearing that now? Some, sometimes. Uh, it's still nice that people recognise you, but I mean, sometimes it could be like quite disheartening because you're I'm working at a shop. Ryan Lee Seeger is 27. He's from Flandudno in North Wales. He's been singing since he was four. Well, I'm a man of many wishes. I hope my premonition misses. Ryan made it onto the live shows of The X Factor in 2010. He was in a boy band called FYD, mentored by Simon Cowell. But there was another boy band on that year, a boy band called One Direction. Today, Ryan is rehearsing for a new musical he's in, called Susical the Musical. Do you know what? I, did, I was doing a dance job, and a few of us went out for some fresh air. A car pulled up, a Range Rover, and uh, one of the dancers was like, oh my God, is that Harry? And he waved, and he was in the front with Nick Grimshaw, and I was just looking at him thinking, wow, I was like, you've got your Range Rover. I was like, you've got an amazing career, and I'm here <laughs> rehearsing for like a 500 pound gig. I remember I had this reoccurring dream that they called me back in because they wanted one more member for One Direction. <laughs> and you were like, yes! Cherise Foster is 24 and was in a girl band on The X Factor called Miss Dynamics that was put together on the show. They got to the live finals. They were kicked out in week three. Cherise is now in a girl band called Office Girls they were put together by Marvin, a music industry old hand, who's come with them today. They're currently trying to get a record deal. It is a very good opportunity. It's almost like a fast track platform. But once it's over, it was so confusing that I, I took a few days to cry. And I think I took like a whole year before I really was like, <laughs> it's heartbreaking for the ones that get, think that they're going to make it, or even the ones that win and then a year later they're back in their li regular lives and nothing is happening. I think it's probably mentally a lot, a lot to deal with. We can't show much of the contestants on The X Factor. When I asked the production company, they'd only hand over pictures or footage if I guaranteed not to show anyone saying anything bad about The X Factor. The programme's a slick and controlled operation. Very controlled. Quite quiet, everybody. Uh, make it a take, then. We've got a lot to do. Before I was on the show, I used to love watching it. Like, that was my Saturday night, sitting in with my mum, and we'd, we'd watch The X Factor. But then after doing the show, like I, I don't enjoy watching it anymore. Why? I think you know how false some of it is, and it's it's difficult to watch, and you see how things are edited. Now what have we got in real two? When people have their first audition, and if they come on stage and they're quite like, you know the greatest of singers. <laughs> people that are watching that don't realise that they've been through like four or five auditions before that to get there. Give us a few words for level, please. I think still a lot of people don't know that, that you've been through quite a few people before you get to the judges. Oh no, yeah, they, you do. It's quite intense actually. They sift through people then who to put on the show. You get a form you to fill in from the X Factor. Like, what's the hardest thing you've ever been through in your life? Like, what are your three greatest achievements? And I was like, I'm 21, like, probably 
like pa passing my driving test, like because <laughs> I live in an estate. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I live in I live in an estate. My my home is nice. I, I worked hard to make my home as comfortable as possible, especially for a young person. And I noticed that I didn't really see much. They didn't really ask me much about my partner, and I'm like, so they kind of put me as a single parent with a child trying to make it. This is a money making vehicle for for Psycho and for ITV. It's not anything, it's not really has nothing. It, this has to do with Simon and everybody else. It doesn't have anything to do with the artist. So you have to wait like a month and then a researcher will phone you, get your information. And once you've done your big audition, once they see how that goes, then they'll come and ask if they could do filming with you at home or. So the big audition is when you see the judges? Yeah. It's like, oh, this is so exciting. But the, I could see that you can see where they're filming more. You can see who they're putting more time into. They can take they can yeah. do anything they want about you and everyone but that's the contract them. you sign. You yeah. sign anything they air about you, they have the right to put it up and you're like because I remember I remember signing, I was like, well I wanna go through and I wanna change my life, so oh let me just sign, sign it. it. How bad are the X Factor contracts? I think initially they're hardcore. I think when you get to be famous they renegotiate it, but I think initially there's not probably the contract, having been in the business for as long as I have, that I would want a group that I represent to sign. You can't sing. I said you can't sing. But on my first audition, I had sung a song called All I Could Do Is Cry by Etta James. It's like an old bluesy song. I heard church bells ring. I That's the one that Kelly Rowland was crying at and said I had a dream about that song and Louis Walsh started crying. A runner had went up to him and Louis Walsh says, oh, could you sing your, your next choice? And it was uh, Adele, someone like you. I and I says, look, everybody has sung Adele today. Like, I don't want to sing Adele. Like, and he was like, no, could you please, please just sing it? So I, was, I felt I was on the spot in front of like a big audience. Like, I could have turned and say, but nah, no thanks. So. I was like, right, okay, so then I sung it, and obviously that's the one they used. The comments are about a different song? Yes. And Kelly, so Kelly Rowland's dream's about a different song? Yeah, it wasn't about someone like you, because everybody was saying, how could she have a dream about that song? It's on the radio every day, like. I remember going from the first audition, and I kind of kept myself to myself and kept my head down whenever there was a camera around, just in case we didn't get through. But then when you get to boot camp, you get sucked in the bubble and you just become X Factor mad. From then on, I just loved it. At the time of boot camp, it's summer here. So everyone like, sits on the steps and jamming. As cheesy as it sounds, there's guitars out and people are singing. <laughs> The airport is up in like this big mansion. You walk into the room and there's like gifts all on your bed, um, just from like different companies, nice. ice watch, iPod touches, things. We were like, oh my god, it's like Christmas. It's amazing, and you're meeting all these celebrities. And it's like, like I met Lady Gaga. I met in the morning. I'm like, oh my god, you're just standing right over there. But once it's over, when you're at judges' houses you have to give them your phone. And we didn't get them back until we were in London airport eh, because they wanted our families to come down to the airport to hear the news. So they phoned my mum and they kept going on and on at her, like to come down. So when you get off that plane, mm -hmm. your mum's there yeah. and you do the whole I didn't make it thing. Uh -huh. I mean, what was that like? It was, it was difficult coming back home and because obviously I had to keep it a secret. Like I'm, I, so when I go to the pub at the weekends and people were like, so what's happening? How are you getting on? Like, I bet you're through, you're just, you're just not allowed to tell us and thinking I'm, I'm not allowed to tell you but I'm not through. Like. So immediately after the show, we sign up with a management company, like, which is part of X Factor and you have loads of gigs booked in already. We met management, we were touring, you know, making money, it was amazing. Personally for me, I, that money was a big change in my life, like where I'm coming from. We had money to pay our rent and this, that and the other. So we were fine up until a certain point. I think it was up until like about mid-February and then they started flaking. It's, it's like a 15 minutes of fame kind of thing. And then no one really wants them. It was like I was in the world alone again kind of thing. Like In general, you don't want to go back to work. You don't want to go back to work in a hair shop. I don't want to go back to work. It's like, I was thinking, what would people think like if I'm working in a hair shop again and I'm supposed to be doing this? You feel lost. You feel like, because you've been in that bubble and it's just bursting, you just get paranoid that people just see you as an X Factor reject. 
because that's that's what was all over the papers. X Factor rejects, and it was just a horrible, horrible thing to hear. And there was nobody from the X Factor that could help us, and I think that was one of the downsides to it for me. Like, although X Factor was great pub publicity, there was nobody to help you with that publicity. Like, you just sort of had to figure it all out yourself. And no calls to say, see how you are, how you're getting uh, on. Nothing. No, no, nobody phones to see if you're okay. If you look back historically at who are the biggest artists in the music business, like take for example Madonna. It's not like she has a great voice, and she's probably the biggest star of the last 30 years. But so she would, would she have ever won in one of these competitions? Probably not. Was the 15 minutes of fame fun? Um. If you go on a show like that, you have to know how to carry yourself, and you have to know how to just endure and take it all in and deal with it. It is like a really, really good experience. It's, it's hard work and it's like a crash, crash course into the, into the, meet, the, the spotlight, I suppose. No, not really. I don't put it on my CV. I oh, just, really? No, because I wanted to do musical theatre for myself, from my training, train hard go through what everyone else has gone through and I've never used I was an X Factor to get a job. I do not like them anywhere. The difference between me being on X Factor and me being with these girls is that I feel like there is more of a, a seed sown and we're watering that seed. Whereas with X Factor it's like, you died so easily because the effort and the hard work wasn't really put into it. I've just started my new band. Um, so we've just got like a, a set together to the now and we're going to start writing our own stuff and recording and doing gigging and just going to try it that way. So it's like, I feel like I'm starting from the beginning again with the band. But I think I just, I, you've got to keep going and give it another shot. <laughs>